Hi YouTube, Matter Max 762 here. Um, I want to touch on my first loosely economic video, actually. This one's about something that's happening right now, that is uh, the merger between the fast food chains Burger King and Tim Hortons. Uh, for those who don't know, Burger King is what's considered subpar fast food, as subpar, I guess that's a double negative almost, but, um, and Tim Hortons is like Dunkin' Donuts, but better, which is, I guess, another double negative. Okay, with my little bit of attempt of humor out of the way, the reason I, I chose to talk about this merger is it comes up to a big deal of tax avoidance. Um, the Burger King is currently located legally in the U.S. Now, Tim Hortons is legally located in Ontario. Both of these countries have different tax rates, and both of these companies are multinational anyway, so they're dealing business in different company, countries, and, uh, well, Canada has a favorable tax rate to the United States as far as uh, corporate tax rates would go for the size of these companies. And, uh, you know, the other thing that people are saying they're not going to pay in, blah, 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 well, they still have to pay what they make in these countries anyway. So even though it's an American country, a Burger King in Hong Kong is going to be paying something out, for example, a Tim Hortons in Mexico. Um, so, you know, it comes down to what the flat rate is, is what they're getting hit with at the end of the day. When, And it comes to the other thing is both these countries are pretty close when it comes to what you have to do to be a corporation and function as a corporation. You know, uh, one of the largest places to run corporations in the United States is Delaware. It's a state that a lot of people would consider a postage stamp. It's one of, it is the smallest state. Um, it's really not known for much. Uh, Wilmington is a large credit place. Uh, you can, I believe, Visa has one of their largest headquarters there, um, but it's a zero percent state tax when it comes to corporate taxes. So everybody grabs a PO box and opens a company there. That doesn't mean taxes don't get paid. It it just means that through that rate and that system of state tax as a corporation, it's a zero percent. If you look at a, a Delaware is also known for 0% sales tax, so a lot of people will travel to Delaware to purchase a television or another large ticket item. Um, it doesn't mean Delaware just is broke because they have no taxes coming in. They charge higher homeowner taxes and other things like that are adjusted to help sort this out. It's a balancing act. Some states charge more, some states charge less, and surprise, surprise, people want the best value for their dollar, so it may be worth spending 30 bucks on gas driving from New Jersey to Delaware to buy yourself an engagement ring or something like that. Uh, technically, you're supposed to file these things. Uh, I'm sure that nobody does, uh, unless they're very strictly overlooked or, you know, they've been audited before, things like that. The average person probably does these things. As I said, the legality of it is questionable at best. Um, if you ask the IRS, it's wrong. But, um, you know, it's same thing, uh, Nevada has a 0% corporate tax rate. They have banks actually set up a banking agreement with the country of Nevis. So you can kind of guess what they're already offering as a, a country. As I said, I'm not suggesting or supporting these ideas before anybody uh, comes to me, but do it. Um, what? Uh, so I'm sorry, again, I have to try to be funny. It's a miserable f character flaw of mine. But with the merger coming, um, I did do a little back research. The people who own shares of Tim Hortons, which is a publicly traded company, are getting a pretty sweet deal. They're getting um, a decent amount of Canadian cash, uh, as I said, it, because a Canadian company goes through their markets, and they will be getting a partial share of the new company that will come in. So I believe it's 0.825 shares per one. So, you know, if you have a couple shares, you may lose a few, but overall you're getting that, plus you're getting cash. So the shareholders are not going to get burnt. Um, and the one thing that's coming for this is people are screaming that, you know, Burger King is wanting a better deal when it comes to taxation. And they have chosen to leave the United States. Well, you know, some people, well, now they're going to pay their fair share, blah, blah. As I said, they're not going to be able to not pay taxes. Unfortunately, no matter where you go, there's ways to reduce your tax burdens, but there's not ways to do it unless your tax attorney is Wesley Snipes. Um, again, another failed humor, but, uh, the thing is, is I think this is another very strong case of you have to come up and you have to reform the tax things and you have to offer lower taxes to get businesses to come in um, because when they don't, they're moving. And this is, you know, 
this is going to be the third largest fast food chain in the world, and uh, fast food's a very large, very profitable business. So you're seeing this merger making a huge thing that just ran away from the United States taxes. Uh, and that's how a lot of people are seeing it. As I said, it's just reducing how much they're going to be paying in taxes. They're still going to be paying a lot more than you or I will ever earn in our entire lives per day almost. Um, and that's even if you win the lottery. But uh, So it's not like they're not doing anything. It's just they're saying, hey, we're paying this much. we got to bring it down because we have the responsibilities to improve our product, to maintain our product, as well as give uh, a good return on investments to our shareholders. That's a great reason to try to reduce anything. It's the same thing. The way that a lot of these larger companies are when you're looking at how much you're dealing with is the same as you or I would look as, hey, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm going to turn the water off as I'm fighting with the toothpaste and getting it on and getting that all ready. It's just cutting down on waste. It's not a bad thing. Um, yes, it's going to hit the pockets of us because they're going to be paying less in taxes. They're still paying taxes, though. That's what a lot of people seem to be missing out on. But, uh, you know, it's the same. If you or I were looking at a gas station, and as I said, it's such a comparable trait with the way the Canadian laws are for corporate and the United States laws are. If we're at a stoplight at a four-way section, two gas stations, one's 36 cents more. Now, unless you have some really, really picky sports car or old thing, or you need something like diesel, it's like a tank of gas is a tank of gas, right? You're going to take the 36 cents cheaper, unless there's also, now, let's also make the other argument for the tax rates. We'll keep them the same. What are you going to do to keep us? Now, if I have a, a Sunoco card, you know, maybe the 36 cents, yes, it's going to cost me more, but I get 15 cents off per card and 2% using their visa or something like that, so I'm going to have an extra perk. Yeah, I may pay 7 cents more today after all the math is done, but I'm getting something else out of it. At the end of the month, I'll get cash back or blah, blah, blah. And uh, as much as we do things, we're not seeing that much for boosting our infrastructure or hiring or things like that for these large corporations. So, you know, if you're not going to reform the taxes to try to lower them to keep things there, you're going to have to start making some offers to try to encourage these people to want to stay here and want to pay these rates. Um, you know, it's a lot of people say blah, 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 this and that. It, it's just simple. And, you know, it's one of those logic and numbers sometimes link together. And when they do, people get a little upset and they put their fingers in their ears and they just scream. Um, but it, it's something that, you know, we got, if we're not going to adjust the tax rates to keep companies here or entice other companies to come in here, because as I said, Canada's lower. People are moving there. Think about what if another multinational corporation, a uh, large company, what how, how good would it be if, say, Honda said, hey, we're done with Japan, let's do it all here. Now, they have plants here, but what if they just said, we're going to move and Honda will be now Honda America for good? I mean, they have their American division, but, you know, it, the worst of ways, you'll have less people paying what the rate is, but you'll have more people paying in, and it is a numbers game. And that's a lot of math to do, and I'm not going to do it for a quick YouTube video because that would take a long time. But uh, I just wanted to do a quick one on this. As I said, I ramble along like normal, make a couple bad jokes. But if you haven't figured out that's what I do anyway, well, then I, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, I said I wouldn't worry about this. Burger King's still going to taste terrible, and I don't recommend eating there. And Tim Hortons is going to have good coffee, and that's about all because I haven't been to Canada in about six years, so I can't remember last time I've had any. Uh, I've heard they're in upstate New York, but I haven't been there in a while either. They're just not in my area, and uh, I do my own coffee because I'm a bit of a coffee addict and snob. So, as I said, just don't really sweat this one too much. It's Nobody's getting some sort of free ride. It's just people trying to reduce a burden and sort things out, and uh, if you don't want to deal with this, you should look at whatever ways we can deal with it at home so people don't leave the home. Okay, you guys have a good day. Bye.